Hi boys and girls. I have some really good news for you. There are three chapters left, but they are all kind of short chapters, so today we get to finish the book. We have chapter 28, which is called Only Charlie Left, chapter 29, which is called The Other Children Go Home, and chapter 30, which is called... <gasps> well, I'm not even going to tell you because I want you to make a prediction. If chapter 28 is called Only Charlie Left and chapter 29 is called The Other Children Go Home, what do you think is going to happen at the end of the book in the third chapter? So think about it for a moment. And tell a grown-up that's near you or a dog or just talk to yourself. <laughs> Make your prediction. What do you think is going to happen? All right. Should we get started? Okay, here we go. Chapter 28, Only Charlie Left. Which room shall it be next? Said Mr. Wonka as he turned away and darted into the elevator. Come on, hurry up, we must get going. And how many children are there left now? Little Charlie looked at Grandpa Joe and Grandpa Joe looked back at little Charlie. But Mr. Wonka, Grandpa Joe called after him. There's, there's only Charlie left now. Mr. Wonka swung round and stared at Charlie. <coughs> there was a silence. Charlie stood there holding tightly onto Grandpa Joe's hand. You mean you're the only one left? Mr. Wonka said, pretending to be surprised. Why, yes, whispered Charlie. Yes. Mr. Wonka suddenly exploded with excitement. But my dear boy, he cried out, that means you've won. He rushed out of the elevator and started shaking Charlie's hand so furiously that it nearly came off. Oh, I do congratulate you, he said. I really do. I'm absolutely delighted. It couldn't be better. How wonderful this is. I had a hunch, you know, right from the beginning that it was going to be you. Well done, Charlie. Well done. This is terrific. Now the fun is really going to start, but we mustn't dilly. We mustn't dally. There's even less time to lose now than there was before. We have an enormous number of things to do before the day is out. Just think of the arrangements that have to be made and the people we have to fetch. But lucky for us, we have the great glass elevator to speed things up. Jump in, my dear Charlie, jump in. You too, Grandpa Joe, sir. No, no, after you. That's the way. Now then, this time I shall choose the button we are going to press. Mr. Wonka's twinkling blue eyes rested for a moment on Charlie's face. Here's the picture. Something crazy is going to happen now, Charlie thought, but he wasn't frightened. He wasn't even nervous. He was just terrifically excited, and so was Grandpa Joe. The old man's face was shining with excitement as he watched every move that Mr. Wonka made. Mr. Wonka was reaching for a button high in the glass ceiling of the elevator. Charlie and Grandpa Joe both craned their necks to read what it said on the little label beside the button. It said, up and out. Up and out, thought Charlie. What sort of room is that? Mr. Wonka pressed the button. The glass door closed. Hold on, cried Mr. Wonka. Then, wham, the elevator shot straight up like a rocket. Yippee, shouted Grandpa Joe. Charlie was clinging to Grandpa Joe's legs, and Mr. Wonka was holding on to a strap from the ceiling, and they went up, 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 straight up this time with no twistings or turnings, and Charlie could hear the whistling of the air outside the elevator as it went faster and faster. Yippee, shouted Grandpa Joe again. Yippee, here we go. Faster, cried Mr. Wonka, banging the wall of the elevator with his hand. Faster, faster. If we don't go any faster than this, we shall never get through. Through what? shouted Grandpa Joe. Aha, cried Mr. Wonka, you wait and see. I've been longing to press this button for years, but I've never done it until now. I was tempted many times, oh yes, I was tempted, but I couldn't bear the thought of making a great big hole in the roof of the factory. Here we go, boys, up and out. But you don't mean, shouted Grandpa Joe, you don't really mean that this elevator... Oh, yes, I do, answered Mr. Wonka. You wait and see, up and out. But, 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 it's, 
It's made of glass, shouted Grandpa Joe. It'll break into a million pieces. I suppose that's right, said Mr. Wonka, cheerful as ever, but it's pretty thick glass, all the same. The elevator rushed on, going up and up and up, faster and faster and faster. Then suddenly, crash, the most tremendous noise of splintering wood and bro broken tiles came from directly above their heads, and Grandpa Joe shouted, help, it's the end, we're done for. And Mr. Wonka said, no, we're not, we're through, we're out. Sure enough, the elevator had shot right up through the roof of the factory and was now rising into the sky like a rocket, and the sunshine was pouring in through the glass roof. In five seconds, they were a thousand feet up in the sky. The elevator's gone mad, shouted Grandpa Joe. Have no fear, my dear sir, said Mr. Wonka calmly, and he pressed another button. The elevator stopped. It stopped and hung in midair, hovering like a helicopter, hovering over the factory and over the very town itself, which lay spread out below like a picture postcard. Looking down through the glass floor on which he was standing, Charlie could see the small faraway houses and the streets and the snow that lay thickly over everything. It was an eerie and frightening feeling to be standing on clear glass high above in the sky. It made you feel that you weren't standing on anything at all. Are we all right? cried Grandpa Joe. How does this thing stay up? Candy power, said Mr. Wonka. One million candy power. Oh, look, he cried, pointing down. There go the other children. They're returning home. Now, okay, pretend for a minute that you are in this elevator a thousand feet above the factory. Would you be happy to be up there or would you be terrified? I would be, can you guess? I would be terrified because I don't like heights at all. So I would, I would probably not be very happy at that point. Huh. Maybe you would agree with me or maybe you would disagree. Let's read the next chapter, which is called The Other Children Go Home. We must go down and take a look at our little friends before we do anything else, said Mr. Wonka. He pressed a different button and the elevator dropped lower, and soon it was hovering just above the entrance gates to the factory. Looking down now, Charlie could see the children and their parents standing in a little group just inside the gates. I can only see three, he said. Who's missing? I expect it's Mike TV, Mr. Wonka said, but he'll be coming along soon. Do you see the trucks? Mr. Wonka pointed to a line of gigantic covered vans parked in a line nearby. Yes, said Charlie. What are they for? Don't you remember what it said on the golden tickets? Every child goes home with a lifetime supply of candy. There's one truckload for each of them loaded to the brim. Aha, said Mr. Wonka. There goes our friend Augustus Gloop. Do you see him? He's getting into the first truck with his mother and father. Do you mean he's really all right? Asked Charlie, astonished. Even after going up that awful pipe? He's very much all right, said Mr. Wonka. He's changed, said Grandpa Joe, peering down through the glass wall of the elevator. He used to be big. Now he's as thin as a straw. Of course he's changed, said Mr. Wonka, laughing. He got squeezed in the pipe. Don't you remember? Oh, and look, there goes Miss Violet Beauregard, the great gum chewer. It seems as though they managed to dejuice her after all. I'm so glad. And how healthy she looks. Much better than before. But she's purple in the face, cried Grandpa Joe. Ah, so she is, said Mr. Wonka. Oh, well, there's nothing we can do about that. Good gracious, cried Charlie. Look at poor Veruca Salt and Mr. Salt and Mrs. Salt. They're simply covered with garbage. And here comes Mike TV, said Grandpa Joe. Good heavens, what have they done to him? He's about 10 feet tall and as thin as a wire. They've overstretched him on the gum stretching machine, said Mr. Wonka. How very careless. But how dreadful for him, cried Charlie. All right, so here's Augustus Gloop. Here's Violet Beauregard. Here are the Salt family members, their little girl Veruca and the mom and the dad. And then here is Mike TV, super thin and very tall. Nonsense, said Mr. Wonka. He's very lucky. Every basketball team in the country will be trying to get him. But now, he added, it is time we left these four silly children. I have something very important to talk to you about, my dear Charlie. Mr. Wonka pressed another button and the elevator swung upwards into the sky. All right, the last chapter.
What do you think is going to happen next? I'll tell you what it's called. It's called Charlie's Chocolate Factory. Does that give you an idea? All right, here we go. The great glass elevator was now hovering high over the town. Inside the elevator stood Mr. Wonka, Grandpa Joe, and little Charlie. How I love my chocolate factory, said Mr. Wonka, gazing down. Then he paused and turned around and looked at Charlie with the most serious expression on his face. Do you love it too, Charlie? he asked. Oh yes, said Charlie. I think it's the most wonderful place in the whole world. I'm very pleased to hear you say that, said Mr. Wonka, looking more serious than ever. He went on staring at Charlie. Yes, he said. I'm very pleased indeed to hear you say that, and now I shall tell you why. Mr. Wonka cocked his head to one side, and all at once, the tiny twinkling wrinkles of a smile appeared around the corners of his eyes, and he said, You see, my dear boy, I have decided to make you a present of the whole place. As soon as you are old enough to run it, the entire factory will become yours. Charlie stared at Mr. Wonka. Grandpa Joe opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. It's quite true, said Mr. Wonka, smiling broadly now. I really am giving it to you. That's all right, isn't it? You're giving it to him, gasped Grandpa Joe. You must be joking. I'm not joking, sir. I am deadly serious. Listen, Mr. Wonka said, I am an old man. I'm much older than you think. I can't go on forever. I've got no children of my own, no family at all. So who is going to run the factory when I get too old to do it myself? Someone's got to keep it going. If only for the sake of the Oompa Loompas. Mind you, there are thousands of clever men who would give anything for a chance to come in and take it over from me. But I don't want that sort of person. I don't want a grown-up person at all. A grown-up won't listen to me. He won't learn. He will try to do things his own way and not mine. So I have to have a child. I want a good, sensible, loving child. One who I can tell my most precious candy-making secrets while I am still alive. So that is why you sent out the golden tickets, cried Charlie. Exactly, said Mr. Wonka. I decided to invite five children to the factory, and the one I liked best at the end of the day would be the winner. But Mr. Wonka, stammered Grandpa Joe, do you really... And truly mean that you were going to give the whole of this enormous factory to little Charlie. After all, there is no time for arguments, cried Mr. Wonka. We must go at once and fetch the rest of the family, Charlie's father and mother and anyone else that's around. They can all live in the factory from now on. They can all help to run it when Charlie, until Charlie is old enough to do it by himself. Where do you live, Charlie? Charlie peered down through the glass elevator at the snow-covered houses that lay below. It's over there, he said, pointing. It's that little cottage right on the edge of town, the tiny little one. I see it, cried Mr. Wonka, and he pressed some more buttons and the elevator shot down towards Charlie's house. I'm afraid my mother won't come with us, Charlie said sadly. But why ever not? Well, because she won't leave Grandma Josephine and Grandma Georgina and Grandpa George. Well, but they must come too. They can't, Charlie said. They are very old, and they haven't been out of bed for 20 years. Well, then we'll take the bed along with us, and with them in it, said Mr. Wonka. There's plenty of room in this elevator for a bed. You couldn't get the bed out of the house, said Grandpa Joe. It won't go through the door. You mustn't despair, cried Mr. Wonka. Nothing is impossible. You watch. The elevator was now hovering over the roof of the bucket's little house. What are you going to do? cried Charlie. I'm going right on in to fetch them, said Mr. Wonka. How? said Grandpa Joe. Through the roof, said Mr. Wonka, pressing another button. No! shouted Charlie. Stop! shouted Grandpa Joe. Crash! went the elevator, right down through the roof of the house, into the old people's bedroom. Showers of dust and broken tiles and bits of wood and cockroaches and spiders and bricks and cement went raining down on the three old ones who were lying in bed, and each of them thought that the world was end of the world was coming. Grandma Georgina fainted. Grandma Josephine dropped her false teeth. Grandpa George put his head under the blanket, and Mr. and Mrs. Bucket came rushing in from the next room. 
cried Grandma Josephine. Calm yourself, my darling wife, said Grandpa Joe, stepping out of the elevator. It's only us. Mother, cried Charlie, rushing into Mrs. Bucket's arms. Mother, mother, listen to what's happened. We're all going back to live in Mr. Wonka's factory, and we're going to help him run it, and he's given it all to me. And, and, and... What are you talking about, said Mrs. Bucket. Just look at her house, cried poor Mr. Bucket. It's in ruins. Here's the picture. My dear sir, said Mr. Wonka, jumping forward and shaking Mr. Bucket warmly by the hand, I'm so very glad to meet you. You mustn't worry about your house. From now on, you're never going to need it again anyway. Who is this crazy man, screamed Grandma Josephine. He could have killed us all. This, said Grandpa Joe, is Mr. Willy Wonka himself. It took quite a time for Grandpa Joe and Charlie to explain to them exactly what had been happening to them all day. And then they even refused to ride back to the factory in the elevator. I'd rather die in my bed, shouted Grandma Josephine. So would I, said called Grandma Georgina. I refuse to go, announced Grandpa George. So Mr. Wonka and Grandpa Joe and Charlie, taking no notice of their screams, simply pushed the bed into the elevator. They pushed Mr. and Mrs. Bucket in after it. Then they got in themselves. Mr. Wonka pressed a button. The doors closed. Grandma Georgina screamed, and the elevator rose up off the floor and shot through the hole in the roof, out into the open sky. Charlie climbed onto the bed and tried to calm the three old people who were still petrified with fear. Please don't be frightened, he said. It's quite safe, and we're going to the most wonderful place in the world. Charlie's right, said Grandpa Joe. Will there be anything to eat when we get there? asked Grandma Josephine. I'm starving. The whole family is starving. Anything to eat? cried Charlie, laughing. Oh, you just wait and see. So what did you think? I'd love for you to send me a message on Class Dojo and let me know what you thought of this book. And for some extra fun, there are two Charlie and the Chocolate Mo Factory movies. One that was made, um, I believe it was in the 1970s. It was the one that I watched when I was a little girl. And then one that was made not that long ago. Um, a newer version. So for some extra fun, you could watch one of those. Let me know what you think of the book. Bye, boys and girls.